USBC Queens tournament comes to an end tonight. Five bowlers remain, but only one can walk away with a tiara. Can Brianna Cote continue her undefeated run? Or will it be Shannon O'Keefe? Or maybe Liz Johnson finding a way for another emotional win? It's time for the first major of the 2018 PWBA Tour season. The Truckee River outside downtown Reno provides great recreation. It's also right next to the National Bowling Stadium, one of the nation's premier and historic bowling centers. Tonight, it plays host to the USBC Queens. Five of the world's best bowlers compete for a chance at women's bowling history. Big prize money, and of course, the coveted tiara. Now let's meet our five finalists with public address announcer Jason Thomas. Our number five seed, our number, our number five seed, Our number five seed is making her PWBA Tour TV debut from Antelope, California, Amanda Fry. <laughs> the number four seed is a two-time PWBA Tour champion and the 2015 PWBA Rookie of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, from McKinney, Texas, Stephanie Johnson. time PWBA winner and the reigning PWBA Tour Championship winner. From O'Fallon, Illinois, please welcome Shannon O'Keefe. <laughs> and our top seed owns one career PWBA title and is in search of her first major. From Red Rock, Arizona, Brianna Cote. Our five bowlers are ready. It's Dave Ryan alongside my star broadcast partners and Kelly Kulik and Carolyn Doran Ballard. And here is the stepladder finals for tonight. We start with the five seed Amanda Fry against Stephanie Johnson. Amanda's first ever show. Johnson seeks her first career major. Legend Liz Johnson tries to become the third bowler ever to win three Queens titles. She's the three seed. Shannon O'Keefe looks for a second title of the young season in the top seed. Brianna Cote also bids for her first career major. Brianna Cote is joined by Carolyn Dorn Ballard Live. All right, Brianna, a year ago you made some very important changes in your game, and it's led to a very successful 2018. Tell us about those changes. Yes, actually, after Queens last year, I went down to 14 pounds. Um, just what I was seeing on tour, I needed to get a little bit more firmer ball speed and a little bit more hand or revolution. So going to 14 pounds really allowed me to, to do that, and I've had great success since. Okay. Tonight, going for your first major, what is going to be your one thought getting up on that approach? Make good shots. Keeping it simple. Back to you, Dave. All right, CDB, she is ready. And she'll have one match as the top seed looking for her first ever major. Final warm-ups for our first match, which comes up in a moment. And Kelly, this was not easy. You bowled, and you bowled well. Tied for ninth. I did, David. USBC Queens infamous for their format. 191 entries, 15 games of qualifying over the course of three days. Cut to that top 63, including Diana, since she's a defending champion. And then from there, it's head-to-head -head matches, double elimination. These top five ladies made it to the step ladder tonight. We'll see who takes home the tiara. So here's Amanda Fry, the fifth seed from Antelope, California. Not far from Sacramento and not too far drive. So family and friends are here watching the lone lefty of our show tonight, a graduate of Vanderbilt, and a former All-American. But this is her first ever TV shot. Nice start, all 10 back. Great way to get out of the gate for, for Amanda Fry, youngest competitor on the telecast today. Some raw and youthful energy we'll see tonight. Four seed is Stephanie Johnson. 
McKinney, Texas, in the Dallas Metroplex. 14-time member of Team USA. She's never won a major. Maybe that changes tonight here in Reno. Four pin stands. Light four pin for Stephanie Johnson. Good delivery, right on line. We go to the instant replay. You can see she's right about six or seven, about 40 something feet, 42 feet. Shakers, two, four, five, eight would be the bucket, but the four pin stands on its own. As tradition for most ladies, we'll go to the hard plastic ball and go directly straight at our spares cross lane. Takes care of business, no problem. Four pin for Stephanie Johnson, two-time PWBA Tour Titleist. Let's break her down and super slow-mo, Kelly. Stephanie Johnson, I've gotten to watch her bowl for many years, being her teammate on Team USA. Four-step approach, gets the ball on the swing, past that knee in the second step. Height of the backswing just goes past the head, shoulder stiff right there, nice and easy. The left arm is forward, great knee bend. Long slide, knee bend continues to go. You see the thumb extends, comes out, the fingers extend through it. I'm so glad she's my teammate. Great physical fundamentals. Oh. And a touch high, and a break, and all 10 back for her first strike. Trips to 4 7. You can see she's sliding about 15 16. Gets the ball further to the right outside that brown indicator down there. That's at the 40, 43 foot mark. Trips the four pin high hit. Muffles up some pins, carries 4 7. Back to the lefty. Dreaded 7 10 split. Wow. Yeah, Amanda Fry, one of her assets, she's got a lot of ball speed. She's really direct up the lane. You can see the head pin bounces off the sideboard. There's no domino effect for that three to go into the six to take out the 10. And she leaves the bedpost, the 710 still stands, but early in the match, long way to go. Seven down, 10 up, open frame early for Amanda Fry. Amanda Fry is very athletic. She's really gotten into the gym this past year from last season. Walks heel toe on that first step of a five step approach. Ball is past the knee in that third step. Left right arm is forward. Look at the openness she has there from the shoulders down to that right arm forward. Keeps the head nice and still. And again, she has a very solid foundation. Hand goes directly up the back, comes right in front of her, her head, and she's got so much power. All 10 back. Amanda Fry told us last night, heavy work in the gym, especially with the legs, to get her in to her shape. And she feels ready physically. Also groups, and that's where the leg exercises came into doing more squats and lunges to give her that endurance she needed to be out on tour this season. Back to Johnson. Had a really hurry and a light hit. One, two, four up. Missed the pocket. Way right out of off her hand in that execution. Her head kind of goes to the left. Arm doesn't get quite underneath her shoulder where the hand is. Flails it out to the right, leaves the one, two, four. Used to be an easy spare on tour, but uh, it's become a little bit more challenging these days. You can easily chop it instead of having that domino effect right into it. She won in Wichita 2016, last year the Orlando Open. A native of South Florida, All-American at UCF in Orlando. Knocks him down. Good cover. And a spare for Johnson. You know, our future for the sport lane pattern conditions, Kelly. Yeah, what the women bowled on all weekday was a 38-foot pattern. So there you see the end of it, 38 feet. Medium volume, about 26. The women are going to be right around that, between that 5 and 10 zone. Look for the ball to start slowing down in this area. This is where it should start changing direction. And again, the person that controls the 1-3 and makes the moves fastest, you have every woman on this pair that were playing their A game. So it's going to come into uh, some big chess moves as we go all along in the matches to see who's going to make the moves faster. 
Back to Johnson. Oh no, the one, two, four, six, ten. It's a lot up. That's a lot up. So what I'm seeing there's there's definitely a little bit more friction on the left lane. You could see it when the ball hooked earlier in her first shot. Now she might have made the adjustment in and it's kind of hydroplaning, which means it burnt up in the front. Didn't have enough energy to, to make the turn, lost a lot of energy. She's got a couple ways to make this. Hit the left side of the head pin and have the head pin go directly into the six pin. Or fit it through. Tough cover. All but one, so an open frame for each now. Amanda with a 7-10 split. And now Johnson returns the favor and keeps this first match in our step ladder finals tonight in Reno very close. Each bowler's got to be thinking strategy now, especially with the transition happening. It seems early. Very quickly. How will Fry respond? Oh, oh. no. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Seven, ten. All right, my head right now is spinning, Dave. I'm thinking back-to-back 7-10s -back on the right lane. Ball is slowing down too much, doesn't have the quite drive going into the pocket. See it deflects and actually takes out the 8-pin. Four pin falls in front. As you said, Dave, lanes are transitioning. I'm thinking possible ball change right away into frame five. It's anybody's match right now. But definitely back to back 7-10s leaves the open frame. Let's go down to Carolyn. During practice, Amanda did try two balls, one that rolls a little bit earlier and is a little bit smoother on the back. The idol that she's throwing was still still gave her that mid lane control, but she thought it would go through the pins a little bit better. As you can see, she did feel as if the back end on both pairs was a little bit tighter than what she had bowled on this week. And of course, she kind of expected that being the only lefty on the pair. She does have a game plan though. If she doesn't feel comfortable with this ball, she will go back to the Sherlock to finish out the game. Good call, Carolyn. That's exactly what's happening. She's not seeing the motion down lane, which means it's too early, giving the players the idea that it's tighter in the back. What we did all week long is we balled up, meaning go to a stronger ball with a stronger core and stronger cover, make a slight adjustment, and get the ball to start sooner. Let it slow down sooner to give you that, that strong motion through the pins. TV debut tonight. There's the seven. We'll see about adjustments as the match rolls on. Shout out to the Johnson family and the Dallas Metroplex. Watch party going on upstairs, the rec room. <laughs> Stephanie told us about last night. Husband Chris, former PBA Tour Rookie of the Year. And the two little kids are watching. Family and friends are gathered. Hope to root on Stephanie to a championship tonight. I can only imagine what Kenzie and Levi are thinking watching their mommy on the big screen. That's mommy. There she is. Yeah. Catches a shaker again. All right. Any player rolls a 300 game during our broadcast night will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. Stephanie has to make a move here. She's been high and she's hasn't hit the head pin. Swish her shot. So she's sticking with the same ball. There's got to be an adjustment either with the hand, move with the feet and the angle. Just can't find the pocket. No, no, no. Light two pin. All right, Dave, I'm, in, I'm the ball rep right now. I'm going to say she needs to make a ball change. It's just not doing it. She's got five frames to give it a chance. You can see the silver getting taller. Just quits. Ball deflects. Two five stands, five is knocked over. I'm predicting a ball change coming up after the break. Single pin, spare conversion, Stephanie Johnson. It's anyone's match, midway point. Our first match from the 2018 USPC Queens from the historic National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada. Storied and historic with 
So much tremendous. Bowling past here. More history unfolding tonight. Fry, all 10 back. That's 23 on lefty to try to get dialed in in match one. All right, Dave, I called it. Ball change right there. She goes to the stronger ball, more aggressive core, more aggressive cover. Kicks up the trail leg. Look at the thumb holes. It's trying to go further to the right. It's changing direction. Drives through the pins a little bit more. Catches the swisher strike. So that's with me right now. That's exactly what I would do, the stronger ball. It's going to stick with it on the, on the left lane and see if she can add another strike to this match. Seventh frame. Big shot. Comes through. And takes the lead by two pins. What a great view. Right around 8-9 at the break point. There, the ball drives through the pocket as it crushes and runs over the nine pin. Great ball change. You know Stephanie Johnson now stepping up on the right lane. She also made a ball change after watching what her last one did. Let's see. The 2015 PW rookie comes up here in her frame. Ooh, ringing 10 pin. Let's go back down to Carolyn. In talking to Rob Gottschall, the Ebonite ball rep, Stephanie did go to a stronger asymmetrical ball, which Kelly had mentioned. That's what most of the girls did all week. Here is the two things that Stephanie is now seeing. She sees a little bit of an early hook spot on the right lane, and the key is keeping her angles straight so she doesn't miss to the right, and when she gets it right early, it hooks early. So this is why she chose this ball, because what she felt was to keep her angles straighter, she could make that parallel one and one, two and two to the left, and this ball should read that mid middle part of the lane and take that early hook spot out. Thanks for that coverage, Carolyn. It's exactly what her keys to success were this week, playing the lane straighter, keeping the ball in front of her. Her high ball speed gives her that advantage. The ladies don't have to migrate inward too fast right now, so if she can make those parallel moves and keep it in front of her, she'll control the pocket and have a chance in this match. 15 games of match play, that 225-53 average. And five and one. Only loss was to Brianna Cote, our top seed. No, no, Another no. Miss. Lucky break right there. They'll leave only the one, two. That was definitely a physical execution right there. That could have been worse, Kelly. Yeah, well, her high ball speed is an asset, but when you try to be too accelerating from the top of the swing, the tendency is to miss either left or right. You could see on the extreme edge right around there, way, way far right of where we're controlling that break point. Ball just doesn't have enough to get back, but catches the break when the pin rolls around, take out the 10, leaving only the one, two. To us last night, it would mean so much to win her first career major. Runner-up to Danielle McEwen in 2015 in Arlington at the PWBA Tour Championship. Not easy to do. Covers the one-two. Has the spare late. Now you can get 24-7 scores, breaking news, and up-to-the-minute highlights streaming across devices. Live and free at the all-new CBS Sports HQ. to give it to Amanda Dave she seems very calm and collected for just being only in her second season 23 years old first TV show she's got some great mental focus right now looks for the turkey eighth frame go up by 15 and this is that one two pocket so the two four up a little more aggressive You can see the ball slightly inward from where it was before. Hits way high on the head pin, doesn't really have a chance. It's a good break, could have been the 247. Couple Tricky breaks. Spare. Yeah. Right back to back. Every shot matters now. Takes care of business, has the spare. And keep in mind, back in 2013, she was on the NCAA runner up team for Vanderbilt. She didn't bowl on TV, she practiced, but didn't make the lineup. Baker Bowling in that event. They lost to Nebraska. So this is her TV debut. <laughs> and she got advice from all of us sitting with our meeting last night, the five finalists and yourself. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I've been on the show many times and everything. Josie 
Ernest Barnes is, was her coach in Vanderbilt. I'm sure she gave her some tips and everything. But uh, this young lady, she's got the talent to do very, very well on tour. Josie, our scorekeeper tonight, we thank her for her help. A strike in the night, foundation frame for Amanda Fry. This is good here. Look, 40 feet the indicator. She's right on board eight. See the ball driving through the pocket, almost splits the eight, nine. This is anybody's match right now, though, Dave. And Josie told us pre-match that keeping the emotions in check would be very important for Amanda. It looks like that's happening so far. Here comes Johnson and the max scores. Down by three pins. Works on a spare in the ninth. Another big shot. Oh. All 10 back. I'd be smiling from ear to ear on that one. Trips to 410. She's not. She seems to definitely have more control in the right lane than the left lane. This is a lane she's got to finish on. But again, like Carolyn said, she's keeping her angles in front of her. Ball is rolling forward. And when ball rolls forward, you get good breaks like this. High on the head pin. Could have easily been the big four. But man, that's when you know you definitely have the better ball in your hand right now. But here's her tricky lane, Dave. This is a must strike situation for her to give herself any chance in this game. And this is the lane she struggled on the most. Would love ever fourth strike in the match right here. Looks better. It is better at all 10 back. For Stephanie Johnson and a lead by seven pins here in the 10th. Much better execution. Look how much the ball's more in front of her. Six at the break point. Again, ball's rolling really forward, drives off the left side of the pin deck. Likes that reaction with a little fist pump. You can see the ball picks up a little bit quicker on the left lane, so we're gonna have to see some migration, keep chasing it inward. Another must strike situation if she wants to put any pressure on Amanda Fry. Best shot of the match right there. Blisters through the rack, all 10 back into the pit. And a 17 pin lead. Hoping to finish out in style here and make Amanda show up in the 10th. You know, as short as the, the tour has just been back, Stephanie's definitely considered one of the veterans. And I have to say, I witnessed many times her stepping up in the 10th frame and striking out to win a match. She's done it not nearly as much as Liz Johnson has, but she's on that path to being a closer when it counts. Wants to close this one out. Ringing 10 pin. The wrap up in an even 200. All right, Dave, she's got a double. Amanda Fry on her first ever telecast. She needs the first two hits and those seven pins to advance on. Talk about a pressure situation right here and right now. Liz Johnson chimed in with a recommendation last night to Amanda to just stay in the moment. Enjoy it, relax. Well, this is your big moment. Gotta have it. Does not. Ends the match. And on the bench, a sigh of relief. Stephanie Johnson will advance up the step ladder. Yeah, I have to give it to you, even though she was a rookie last year. Just inside off her hand, you could see where she's been around seven or eight. That one was definitely further right inside of her target. She likes to be firm but unfortunately just didn't catch a good break. Thank you. 200, 172. Stephanie Johnson survives and climbs a ladder. Legend Liz Johnson is next. Johnson and Johnson, our next match from Reno. You're watching the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. Thank you, Liz. We're ready for her first match. She'll take on Stephanie Johnson, the four seed, in match number two. 44 years old, three-time reigning PWBA Tour Player of the Year, Hall of Famer, superstar, 22 titles. 
She's the Energizer Bunny. Just keeps going. Great start. All 10 back. Higher seed gets choice to start the match. That means Liz will finish, so if there's any pressure, she's going to take it all on her shoulders. But Stephanie Johnson made that ball change in match number one. She's going to kick off this game on the right lane, defeating Amanda Fry 200 to 172. Let's see if she keeps that momentum going. Made a key ball change. Strategy was very important for Stephanie when she didn't have that look into the 1-3 pocket. Let's see how the lanes transition now. In our second match, Stephanie Johnson. Trips the 4-7 again on that right lane. Great ball roll right there. She's lined up, but now is the time to start inching a pinch left. 5-6 at the break point. Again, high on that head pin, but when the ball is rolling forward, it allows the pins to, to dance a little bit more on the back end. She's currently studying for her second master's degree. Has one in communications, going for a second in human resource management. With the two kids, couple jobs, on tour, superwoman. Uh, apparently she's got 36 hours in her day <laughs> instead of 24. I've got to find the key to that. Nice look. Nice shot. And 60 feet to success for Stephanie Johnson. Good delivery, great aerial view. She's sliding still about 15, 16. Look, 43 feet, you can see it. Solid blue on the left side, solid orange on the right side. Ball's in the roll phase right there. 10 straight back in the pit, Dave. Good start continues for Liz Johnson. For Liz, her key to success is always staying down at the foul line. And if you know fans that listen to her in her interviews, she always looks at the foul line. Step three, slide right there. Look, the backswing is not as high as her head. You can really see her eyes focus down at that foul line. Left arm is straight out to the side. 44 years old, she's got fantastic knee bend, creates maximum leverage. Let me tell you, this no one controls the 1-3 pocket better than Liz Johnson. She says, yeah, the knees are sore a little bit. She had a little scare with a mishap at home with her shoulder. Was out two wow. weeks before the season. That's high shot. And only a seven pin count there on that one from Liz. But she feels physically great entering the show tonight. Yeah, well, I have to say, recalling, you know, Liz went out. She lost to Amanda Fry. So she had a lot more matches to bowl in the contender's bracket. All right, right here. You see right there where the ball is. You can't even see the indicator when most of the other ladies are just a bit outside of it right there around the 7-8. Way, way high in the head pin. You can hear a grunt as she released the ball. Leaves the 3-9-10. An easy cover. And the 9 stands. So an open frame for Liz. It is early. We'll see how that affects things. And Stephanie Johnson sees her lead up to 15 pins, looking for the first three here to start her second match. It's got to feel good. A little confidence boost, right? Exactly. Now she tripped the four pin on this right lane a couple of times. She's got to move. I'm saying at least a two and one or a three and one. Because her angles are so close in front of her, she doesn't have to move her feet nearly as much. So one and one, two and one. Right there, there it is. She's got a wide pocket at the one three, trips the four pin, makes the move, goes a little light, catches the shaker strike, works herself into a turkey. Going down the lane, she actually gets it further right outside the lane. So here's 37 feet, there's 40. She's a little further outside because the women have developed some friction there. Ball starts to hook back and when your pocket becomes that wide, it's gonna be hard to beat. Look at the five slowly dangle. High hit leaves the baby split, 310. Can't get the front four, so the split here. 
It's no 7-10. But any, any split in a major show, it's a challenge. No, you can see that the left lane definitely hooks more than the right lane. And for those viewers back home, tune in to PWBA.com. Our friends at Kegel have a lane mapping for the National Bowling Stadium. And you can see by looking at lanes 25 and 6, that's our TV pair, there's a bit more friction on the right side of this left lane. So it's definitely going to play a role in when and how fast the ladies move. Chops the three, leaves the 10, and returns the favor on the open frame. And the match tightens just like that, so back-to-back -back opens. Between the two. Major development in match two. Fourth frame for Liz. How will she respond? Very well. Crunches 10 back into the pit. A perfect shot. Can't wait to present the 2018 PWBA Tours schedule on CBS Sports Network. June 30th, Orlando, U.S. Women's Open. And then how about August? It's Kelly into early September, wrapping up with a tour championship. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage is going to be fantastic on CBS Sports Network. Yeah, all live telecast is going to be that elite field. Very, very exciting. The fact that we're going to be on TV Saturday nights. Boy, if there's ever a way to want to make a show, it's then going to some new areas this year. It's going to be exciting for the ladies to visit these cities and meet with the fans. Wow. Those guys reduce the deficit to one, and it gets a late hit and does that. With back-to-back -back strikes in the fourth and fifth to make things very interesting in match number two. Watch this, watch as the, as the bedpost falls late. Look, the six pin and the four pin both go to the side rails. Seven, 10 stand up and just ever so gently fall off into the pit. How quickly after the open frame for Liz Johnson puts herself right back into this match. The Hall of Famer is analyzing the lanes here. So much thought strategy goes into where you line up and ball selection. Now will Stephanie Johnson respond nicely. She's really locked on that right lane, Dave. Again, trips to four, gets a shaker, solid strike right there. So the last two times, both ladies on this lane have tugged the ball. They've really pulled down from the top of the swing a little bit too early, missed inside their line. So make sure the swing is up the lane. Make sure the swing is up the lane. And you see Clara Guerrero is there, her roommate. Mm -hmm. There for a reason, right? Good luck. Yeah, the last two times Stephanie Johnson has won on TV, she's roomed with Clara Guerrera. So I think she's looking for that little bit of mojo or that little uh, bit of luck. Clara, a star from Columbia, injured this week, had some back spasms. We hope she's feeling better. You heard Ten her pin. help. Yep, but did exactly what I said. Just got the swing up the lane a little bit more in front of her. A little late arrival, the ball, flat 10. Easy spare for Stephanie. Cross lane with the plastic ball. And some general information, Dave, you know, when we're practicing during that warm up, we usually don't shoot a lot of spares. But as soon as that spare ball goes down the lane, it will have some dynamic changes to the lane itself. Cross lane for the spare for the 10 pin. Has a 10, has a spare, and it's close in match number two. Johnson and Johnson shaping up to be a classic here at the SBC Queens in Reno, Nevada. The conclusion of match two on the way. Beautiful area, Reno, Truckee, and Lake Tahoe, California, side of the Queens this year. CDB joined by Amanda Fry. So Amanda, congratulations on a fantastic week you. and your first telecast. A couple of bad breaks, but you did make a ball change. Tell us about that. You know, I felt like the Ida was a little too weak, so I went to that Sherlock because I felt like it'd be a little stronger down lane. I'm happy with the ball change. I felt confident. I threw the ball great, so it, it happens. <laughs> okay. All right, now tell us about your first TV experience. Did you enjoy it? Was it as fun as you knew it would be? And did it go as fast? Remember, we talked about that last yeah. night. Oh, it went by extremely <laughs> fast. I looked up and we we're already in the 10th frame. So uh, I'm happy. I threw great shots. I felt really comfortable. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds. Good luck this season. Back to you, Dave. Carol, thanks so much. Uh, what a week for Amanda Fry. She watched the show 
last year in Baton Rouge. Diana Zavyalova, who's watching here tonight for the crowd. Defending champ. Won it last year in Louisiana. And Amanda told us that just being there, seeing the energy and the excitement helped her get ready for tonight's appearance. Great week. There's Diana with Verity Crawley watching. Great crowd tonight in Reno as well. Tremendous bowling town. And Liz Johnson with a strike to regain the lead in our back and forth second match. Liz Johnson, just amazing. I have to say, most of them, <laughs> once she got to the contenders bracket, I said before, the ladies, all of them are playing their A game, but she just looked like she was bowling league. She was getting up there, she was executing, making fabulous shots, physically fit, sound, and that's her being aggressive, keeping the ball up the lane again. So Liz is a pinch deeper inside around board eight. You see as the ball migrates, it kind of lost its energy and uh, was a little lazy. So two eight, luckily only leaves a single pin sparrow. She'll go again to that plastic ball for the single pin conversion. But that one definitely lost energy too soon. Has a spare. She now lives in Chicagoland. Valentine, Illinois, 25 minutes from O'Hare. But born and raised in Cheektowaga and Niagara Falls, Western New York. Yeah, still close drive to, to mom and dad, still living back in the Buffalo area. Third in 2012, trying for a first major tonight. Another big shot for Johnson. Touch high, nine pin. Yeah, so those trip fours she's been having before, now the ball is really driving off that spot. Gets the four out, but leaves the stone nine. Tight match, Dave, again, 134, 125 if she makes, 126 if she makes this. I mean, it's really anybody's match still. No problem. So 125 in the six, 134 in the six for Liz. Just a nine pin match. Key though, Stephanie's got to finish on the left lane. Liz is going to finish on the right. So she's been really dominant on the right lane. She's got to get locked in the left lane if she's going to put any pressure on Liz. And a big shot. Oh. Nine pin again. Back to back nine pins. Wow. You know, Dave, we're in a higher area and such a great area where you can see how the ball, how hard it drive off the spot. Look at her foot right there again. 14 at the foul line. Look, the thumb clear it. Fingers catch the ball a little bit longer as gravity comes forward. Way, way right comparison to where our other lines have been. But that's why I said there's enough hook, there's enough friction there. Ball should deflect off the five and take out the nine, but it's got too much power and leaves it standing by itself. Back to back, nine pin, single pin, spare conversions. Keep this very close. Number two seed, Shannon O'Keefe. One of the hottest players on tour. Already has won this year. Sonoma County Open. Fourth event of 2018 unfolds here tonight. My. She liked it. Fighter to the end, extends her lead. Both players sliding same spot, but you see how her thumb clears and the fingers stay bent? That's how you gain rotation, everybody, is keeping those fingers bent because the thumb has to clear first. Ball rotates off those fingers. Her lines are directly in front of her. She's a little bit left inside of Stephanie. Smashes the pocket. Extends her lead even more, going in the ninth frame. Big strike in the ninth. Liz Johnson looks good. 
Start your morning right with a healthy serving of sports from recapping last night's action to breaking down the top stories of the day. The boys have you covered. Catch Boomer and Geo weekday mornings starting at 6 Eastern right here on CBS Sports Network. Ninth frame for Stephanie Johnson. This is a must strike situation. It's her good lane. Needs it. Doesn't get it. Six pin stands for Stephanie Johnson. Four six back to back nine pins. Needs to not creep. Make a move now. Creeping means only one board. She's got to go the two. Two and oh, two one. There's enough friction built up. Still in the same part of the lane where you can miss right down here. Now there's so much where you're going to get the ball to recover. As the ball drives on the head pin, she was able to trip the forward before. Luckily, she broke up the split. Forsey needs a great finish and some help. Yes, she does. She needs to throw all three here in the 10th frame to give herself any type of chance. Max scores 213. Liz can still strike out for 244. Packs it in, Dave. all week that the ball speed, lane conditions, her footwork really played into her A game. She's had a great week. Only one open each, but for Liz, it was very early in this match. Yeah, she needs the next two to give make Liz at least show up in the 10th frame for a mark of some sort. Big shot right here. And converts. It's about applying pressure now to the Hall of Famer. Think about the last match, Dave. She struck out in the 10th to force Amanda to show up. She's striking out in the 10th frame now. You can see the ball roll forward. Six pin kicks off the side, kicks out the 10. And again, she's going to make the Hall of Famer show up in the 10th frame and at least make a mark. Seven pin. So a 2 12 for Stephanie Johnson to wrap up her second match. Here comes Liz Johnson. Stepping up. Needs a mark. That's it. To advance to take on Shannon O'Keefe, the number two seed here in Reno. How many times have we seen her do this? Mark to win to advance to the Countless next match. Countless is the exactly. answer. Countless. Yeah, I've seen it from here and down there. <laughs> There's the mark, it's a strike to wrap it up. And Liz Johnson will advance up the ladder to take on Shannon O'Keefe. She's done it again. Great shot in slow motion, four-step approach. So solid at the foul line, arm swing in front. She's just two boards inside of Stephanie. She's at that 10 board. Look, she almost stones the eight pin. That's how powerful her ball roll is. Ball change here on the field just to give her some more information. Two eight spare. Two time Queens champ, 2009 and 2015. And she's been telling us really for the last few years, Cal, that well, age is just a number for me. 44 and still going strong. She, you know, take anything you want, say anything you want. Liz Johnson is just really good at her job. Nine to five. 8.30 in the morning on Friday to 10 o'clock at night for qualifying in another week. She's good at her job. 2.32, 2.12 victory for Liz Johnson. Yeah! She told us today she is feeling better. It's coming around, but that's pretty tough. She did. She sought some medical help. You know, she did have the opportunity. She could have sought medical help for the match, uh, missed out on it, went into the contender's bracket, and tried to give herself another chance that way. 
But as Clara said, she bowls fearless. She never gives up. She never quits. And she suffered through that match against Stephanie. Tough start. Liz Johnson against Shannon O'Keefe. Left lane's been a little tricky for Liz. She went high last time when she missed. But you can see, now I said the left lane hooks more. She's way inside. Stephanie was around board eight. Liz is around board 10. Not much hold there. Now as the, the friction is starting to build up to the right, there has to be some angle adjustment. You're gonna start seeing the women move a little bit more further inside and start to throw it to the friction instead of trying to find the hold. Three, six, seven, ten. can't cover, three up. So loss and count early, first frame of her second match. Here comes Shannon O'Keefe. Winner already on tour this year. Trying to become the first two-time winner in 2018. Kind of places the ball in the swing just a bit late. Long stride on that third step. It's a big step here, but again, look, the head is still. The left arm is out to the side. There's no over-rotation of the torso. And Shannon's infamous for the follow-through really being aggressive all the way hitting up to her back. That's how much she extends through it. Bicep curl right there for her. That's what she does in the gym, and that's what she does well in the lanes. Hook a little. Hook. Yes. Enough to tap the seven. You heard her. Hook a little. Hook a little. Go back down to Carolyn. Talking about Liz, she is trying to do two things. She's using a smooth asymmetrical ball that actually has a little surface so she can use the, uh, get it to roll in the middle part of the lane. She is trying to keep the ball in front of her and keep those angles straight. How is she gonna do this? She actually is choosing to stay a little bit more upright at the foul line so that she can keep that angle a little bit straighter. All right, Carolyn. That gives me some good information because Liz's benefit is staying low. So if she's trying to make the ball work, she's already making a mistake right there, and I'm going to call her out on it. What I need to see is I need to see her change to a more cleaner ball. You can see where her head's a little bit tilted forward. She's trying to stay up there to create even roll. I think she needs to change balls, something a little bit cleaner. Shannon's going to be left of her, something retains more energy, and she's got to make the move. She's got to do it soon. 257, that's a nice cover and a spare. Tricky shot there for Liz Johnson, but she's in a 23-pin hole early. The road to the finals, 224-20 average, qualifying sixth. And you said it, watching last night, looked like she was bowling league. She was on a serious roll. Look how many 700 series she has, and that's when she had the string of seven, eight, nine strikes. She shot 291 game, 280 another game. Her low set, 632, that could have just been fatigue. Solid strike right there on the left lane, though see if she can keep it up. Shannon O'Keefe really out early with that double. She should be a, a bit left or further inside of Liz based on her ball roll, but she likes to be aggressive. Head women's bowling coach at McKendry, a national powerhouse. A lot on her plate. Right now, one of the best in the world. All 10 back, Shannon O'Keefe feeling good. Yeah, she too said in her interviews, Dave, that we talked about in that little break that, you know, she's made some changes with, with the ball she's throwing. She's seeing different motion, and it's definitely paying off with the success she's had so much in the season. Walks fairly straight, steps way left with that second step, comes back to the right on the fourth step in the slide itself. She's sliding 16, 17, Liz was 14. You see the thumb with the blue tape on it clears a deep, deep knee bend, though. Wow. That's just sheer athleticism, folks. Says she's in the best physical shape of her life. Constant presence in the gym. Hoping that pays off. And she is locked in right now. Great start for Shannon O'Keefe. Yeah, I have to say, Shannon's going to have an advantage in this match. All the ladies that played straight can now get, she can get left of them, create that hook to the right, and have more hold in front of her. Any player rolls a 300 game during the telecast, and off to the great start here. Receives a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. Back to Liz. Cuts it to 33. Looks like she made a move, stayed with the ball, maybe caught it a little bit more with her fingers. You can hear her grunting at the foul line. 
Don't count Liz out, though. Never. Never count her. No, no. She's now at eight. Now she's getting the friction to the right. So before, she, where she was over that 10 board, especially on that left lane, she's now kind of trying to get in the spot that Shannon O'Keefe is playing. Get the ball to stand up taller, a little bit harder. Really drive through that 1-3 pocket. Only Mildred Ignizio and Wendy McPherson have won three career Queens titles. I've met Mildred. She's a wonderful lady. Liz would love to get number three, of course. Two pin here. And she told us last night she doesn't think about those things. No. I mean, the history, what she's done in a remarkable Hall of Fame career. She said, yeah, when I'm done, long time down the road, I'll it, think about it. You know, I have to, Dave, this is going to be a compliment, but Liz is, is just, she's a very good good worker, a diligent worker. She's does the same thing over and over again, does it so well, just like a factory line. She's up there, one, next, next, next. It's just one shot after the other. Shannon's got four in a row. She's looking for five. To extend her lead over Liz Johnson. How about the front five? Shannon O'Keefe. Ten, ten pin stands. Good shot. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you could see the aerial view we have, Dave, it's fantastic. She's really a little bit further inside left. Playing more left to right or inside and out. Look at the six pin just falls in front of the 10. Spare here will keep her lead ahead of Liz Johnson. Controlling the pocket as well as she does. Has the 10 pin. Rhoda Richmond so successful currently we call it on CBS Sports Network. Last year, Shannon O'Keefe, a dramatic victory over Liz in the championship match. One to remember for Shannon O'Keefe. Yes, it was. I remember I was watching from the sidelines because I was due up after that, and she took Liz head for head, ball for ball, to win, to go on to face me in that championship match. And uh, she had great ball roll. She threw the ball fantastic, winning her first ever major title. This would be her first career Queens. All 10 back, fist pump, Shannon O'Keefe, 33 pin lead, halfway home in match number three against a legend, Liz Johnson. Never easy to beat Liz, O'Keefe tries to complete the feat next. Shannon O'Keefe, big lead on Liz Johnson, match three from the Queens here in Reno. Liz Johnson beats Stephanie Johnson, she's joined now by Carolyn Doran Ballard. On a great week. I want to talk about put yourself in a position to win. Tell us one of your goals for this year. <laughs> win another title. <laughs> she makes things so simple. Back to you, Dave. <laughs> Stevie, thanks. And Stephanie, what a week. She had hoped to add the tiara to the trophy case back home in the Dallas Metroplex. Little Kenzie is one, Levi a three, you know, have them play with her. <laughs> <laughs> it's we'll going to be four up. in July. <laughs> That's right. Where is the four years have gone? Oh, great ages. Back to Liz Johnson. Needs to get on track right now. Late on the seven. That's the direction you want to go in. Yeah, she's got to put some strings of strikes together here if she wants to get caught back up in this match and put any type of pressure on Shannon O'Keefe. She told us last night, one thing I always do is fight to the end. We'll never give up. Now's the time. I was interviewed early in the season at the Las Vegas Open, and we talked about player of the year. I said, Liz will be 77. She'll be on crutches coming in the bowling center and still be a competitor at any given moment in her career. <sighs> Catches the back swisher. Back strikes. Are right, you looking for some great PWBA gear? And then visit the official online store, and the PWBA at shoppwba.com. Bowl fearless. Bowl like fearless. Clara did. Yep. I think Shannon might have uh, forted that that little notation there. We've got some beautiful T-shirts we're selling at every tour stop. It's been the motto for her girls at McKendry, herself, and now some of the younger ladies out here on tour. 
for the double. Go up by 33. Seventh frame. All 10 back. Perfect shot in the 1 3 pocket. Shannon is really seeing the lane very, very clearly. It's crystal clear, just like our HDTVs right now. Look at her foot. There's the walk left. There's the slide back slightly to the right. Access point is staring back at us right there in the middle. Now you notice she's playing more inside and out. She's getting the ball to the spot sooner. So she's getting it to the friction sooner, changing direction more smoothly. And look, the one three, watch the ball split the eight, nine. That's perfect ball motion. Already a champion once on tour this year. Looks to stay high. Woo, six pin wraps itself around the 10. Ring in 10 pin. That was quick. Look right here again. So Liz has been around board 10. Shannon is clearly getting the ball this way. That's the exaggeration, but after the friction, it's almost like there's a vacuum just sucking the ball right back to the pocket. Six pin goes horizontal, wraps itself right around the 10. McKendry purple for the spare. No Got problem. It. Mama Bearcat, they call her. Team nickname of McKendry. That small school has become a bowling powerhouse in Illinois. Other Brian, a coach as well. Part of his multi coaching duties. They're a good pair out here. But now Liz Johnson, if she's going to give herself any chances match, she needs to strike in the eighth and ninth frame. Big shot. Looks for the turkey to reduce it to 22. Comes through. So it's 22 pins. I think the pins didn't go straight back. They kind of went to the outside into the gutters. You know, that's just the ball losing a little energy too quickly. Watch right here. Eight at the break point. See all the silver? See how the ball deflects towards the nine pin and kind of the six pin and both the four pin go off to the side instead of going back into the pin deck? She needs to hold on this ball for at least two more frames. Strike here gives her any chance still in the match. Brianna Cote, top seed, awaits the winner. Hoping for her first career major. Big foundation frame shot for Liz Johnson. You bet. And it's 12. Ratchets up the pressure on O'Keefe. One, two, three, four. Really pulls through it. Deep knee bend. Seven, eight, break point. She catches that eight, nine, right. So she sticks with the same ball. Doesn't do what I thought she might do. But that's because she's just so good at her physical game. She knows what works well for her. Here. Response for Shannon O'Keefe. Big strike. Shannon is really golden when she can just be so aggressive and almost try to overthrow the ball. Watch here, nice slow motion. Look how close the ball is to her ankle. Thumb comes out. Focal point, look at go between the six pin and the 10 pin. Steps off to the side. Five pin almost dances and stands alone by itself. The head pin bounces off the side wall to kick it out. She gets just more and more aggressive as time goes on. That's her strength, that's her asset. Already, three top ten finishes on tour to begin the season. So what you needed. Late tap on the two. Big hit. I got to say, Dave, it's hits like this when you know you're in the right part of the lane with the right ball. You're tripping two pins forward. You're throwing swishy strikes, knocking out the five the last one because the ball didn't get there soon enough. She has got the world in her hand right now. What focus? Read it. Read it. 10 pin. Very aggressive there. Misses right. Gets that one way far out of a break point where she's been. 47, so she needs to make it just to lock out Liz. 
because Liz can only strike out for 246. So this is a must need spare right now. Got it. Two forty seven outstanding game for Keith. Oh Keith. It's the BPAA moment of the match, Kelly. The first strike of the tenth had to happen. Right here. You heard her say it, hook. Ball's a little late, trips the two pin forward. Her emotions written all over her face. She knew she needed it. Shannon O'Keefe has knocked off Liz Johnson. Brianna Cote is the top seed, awaits O'Keefe here in Reno, Nevada for the 2018 USPC Queens title. Pam won the 1976 USPC Queens Hall of Famer in the house here tonight. Yeah, Reno's her home. Just a lovely, lovely lady. Ever, ever does she not have a smile on her face. Brianna Cote looking for her second national title, her first career major. She's the higher seed and she's choosing to start, which means she will finish the match to win herself a TR if she can. The top seed starts her night. No tie, tough spare. High through the face, three, four, six, seven. Must go across lane. She's further right of Shannon. So she's outside of Shannon, which means she's in that friction more. You're going to see the ball start up sooner. She's got to find a way to get left and stay on top of Shannon or maybe even be inside of her. Cross lane for the spare. Got to slide it. Three, four, six, seven, no. Four, seven stands early open for Brianna Cote. Back down to Carolyn. Even though Shannon had a really good look that last game, she's decided to make a ball change on the left lane. She's going to use the same ball on the right lane, keep it in front of her, and allow that ball to just read the dry when she does get it to right. It's a lot smoother. She feels confident with that. The left lane has changed just a little bit for her. She's going with a stronger ball that will finish down lane. Read the mid and be stronger down lane. She feels like she didn't have as much mistake area on the left lane. Wow, good notation there, Carolyn. Yeah, I, I said earlier the left lane's going to hook a little bit more because of the lane mapping that you can see on bowl.com. But uh, going to the stronger ball means going to a zone left inside. And yes, getting the ball to slow down sooner. You can see she's still sliding 16, 17. Look at the thumb. Look at the fingers carry the ball that split second longer. So she's right around 6, 7. Ball's getting lazy, though. Leaves the, could leave the bucket, but still it's a 2, 5. Gonna hook at it. No problem with the spare. Second career Queens TV show for Shannon O'Keefe, also in 07, finished fifth that year. Breakdown so far, left and right lane. Four for six and four for six. So let's see what that ball change does for her. I believe it's the same ball, but it might have a different layout in the bowling ball itself. So it will give her a different ball motion as it's traveling down the lane. Woo, did you see that? Dave looked like somebody kicked that left. Right there, she, I think it went to a pin-up bowling ball. So again, it's gonna store a little bit more energy. She moved further inside. Look, you can see she's sliding a bit deeper. Now she's crossing 10 at the arrows, way, way out to 5-6, where that friction was built up by the straighter players. And that ball continues to drive off the back end of the pin deck. But Brianna here in the second frame, she's either gotta go with her or stay on top of her if she wants to give herself a chance. Top seed. Fountain Valley lost to Danielle McEwen championship match. Split. 4-9 split. Oh, my. All right. So high shot. This one was just a bad break. She can slide this over. It's still early in the match. But I, I will say there's a big difference between the two of them. Brianna's likes to play firmer. That's her strength. Straighter up the lane. The ball still continues to drive. So it's got strong energy left in it. But now she's got to get the ball on the left side of the four pin to slide over in the nine. 
Shannon stays focused. Tough to pick that one up. Nine stands at open frame for Brianna Cote. Tough start to the championship match. Brianna has a five-step approach, and it's interesting. She has what I call late timing because she gets the ball a little bit late in the swing. So there's step three. The ball should be past the knee. So here's step three. It hasn't quite finished yet. I see where the heel goes down. The ball really should be behind her knee already. Short fourth power step. But she really has great strength in her hand and her wrist to stay behind the ball and really power through it. She also is throwing a 14-pound ball where the other women were throwing 15, which allows her to do that. Makes a move on the left lane, puts herself back with a strike in the third frame. She said it was last night, I've got to stay patient. And I have a tough start early. She didn't envision it would be this tough. <laughs> and make her spares, but she's made her move and now a strike. Yeah, so now she's sliding 18, nine at the arrows. Not quite as straight. Same area, so the ball should be starting to tip up a little bit earlier there. But that 14 pound with that higher RG goes a little bit further down the lane. And she knocks 10 pits back. Looks like Shannon went to the ball change on the right lane as well with that pinup placement. See it. Yes! You hear her, see it. See it, see it, see it. That means the ball has got to slow down and make its directional change towards the pocket. She's really focused right now. Again, sliding deeper on that right lane. Nine at the arrows, out to the six board at the break point. If I, I could even, I would say, if I was the ball rep right now, get it to the right even sooner. Throw it to the friction even sooner so it picks up and makes some more of a directional change and slows down. Already clinched a better top finish in the Queens. She wants it all. She wants the tiara tonight in Reno. Not quite there. Not quite there. Leaves the 2 7. So with our lane pattern, it's 38 feet. You can see the ball extending at that brown hash marker. That's 40 to 43 feet. They're three feet in distance. What I would see right here, you need to get the ball way, way back here at this part outside the lane and then get the ball to tip up. Right now, the ball is just too far down the lane. But she's had such good ball reaction, it's hard to change in the spur of the moment. Nice cover. Let's go back down to CDB. Brianna, Bri Brianna is using a strong asymmetrical ball with some surface. She's actually parallel of where she played him this week because when she got to her championship match, she's uh, been seeing a little bit of the early friction. She has to parallel, keep her speed up, and stay aggressive. That's her game plan. Yeah, Carolyn, that's pretty good. Parallel means you're moving the, the two and ones. You're keeping your feet, the, the one and board angle to keep in front of you. You're trying to use the oil down the lane as hold. So that's what a parallel move is. Back to back strikes after the two early opens for Brianna Cote. That's got to feel good. Build some confidence and stay in the match. Her road to the finals. Yeah, look, 647-09 against Missy Parkin. Josie Barnes, 661 to 637. Josie went very far in the contender's bracket. 698 to 683, close match. But look how she knocked off Shannon O'Keefe by just four pins to be the undefeated person in this final championship match. She won in Lexington in 2016. Last year, she told us a lot of on and off lane issues she ran into. Didn't have the year she wanted at all. Bring a 10 pin there. So 2018's already been a much better start for her with the runner up finish at Fountain Valley to Danielle McEwen and now the top seed here in Reno. Yeah, she found some different ball motion that allows her to play her A game. And all these women out here, Dave, if you can play your A game, you don't have to think about anything. Just go through the motions, physically throw the ball, and make your, your read of what your ball is doing. And she did a great job right there, but bringing 10 stands alone, spare ball cross lane to convert. There's a 10. Last time she made the cut at the Queens was four years ago. She's never had success at this event on a major scale until tonight. It it's was been a great week for her. Such a big surprise to me, Dave, when she said that. You know, here three seasons in a row where she didn't even make the top 64, and she comes in this year, her, her lead at Fountain Valley, finishing second there, and now all of a sudden she's the 
leader and uncontended defender going into this championship match. So she's really, whatever she's done mentally and physically and learning her ball motion, she's made a drastic change in a short period of time. How will Shannon respond? Big four. High shot, tough break. Yeah, I think when she made the move left, she didn't keep her eyes right. She took her target with her, and that was a big mistake. It's a shorter pattern. It's right on the edge of that shorter pattern. Four-step approach really just drops the ball and walks by it, but you could see that was way left off her hand, looking for that hold inside, didn't have it. 4-7 stand, so an open frame. And a lead slice the six pins now. Brianna Cote, the nightmare start with the two opens, but she's right in the match here, nearly to the midway point. I consider Shannon really one of the top players out here because she can play straight and she can play left to right. She's really good at that. I think she's just trying to keep her angles a little bit too much in front of her. Go another two left, get your eyes back to the right, throw it to the friction, it'll come back for you. Just like that. Perfect shot, one three pocket, crunches 10 back into the pit. A nice response after the open for Shannon O'Keefe. She has a six pin lead. Brenna Cote, the top seed. Conclusion of the 2018 Queens, come on. Trophy, the tiara. A big paycheck on the line here from Reno, Nevada and the National Bowling Stadium. Sensational finish on the way. Top seed, Brianna Cote, Red Rock, Arizona, north of Phoenix, small town. Trying to bring, bring back the big trophy. To the desert. Strike here, gets her back. Had to really hurry. One, two, four. All right, Dave, I know I said get it right fast, but that was a little too far to the right. She must have just accelerated so much from the top and just didn't quite catch it all. But you could see every time she says her strength is keeping in front of her, look on the edge of that gutter right there. That's playing with danger. It's a good break. She leaves the one, two, four. Covers nicely. Big start, Central Missouri in her collegiate days. First bowler ever, any division to win the NCTA National Player of the Year four times. Four-time All-American, also a four-time member of Team USA. Had a great career. And with husband Randy watching, what an opportunity tonight for her first major. Both ladies on the show only had a bowl, 33 games. And it sounds like a lot, but it was over the course of five days, so it was really spread out. Shannon bowled one more with the previous match. She liked it. 4-9 trip, Dave. All right, I said the left lane hooks. This one was better, so got it to the right a little bit further before the brown hash marker right there. You could see the yellow thumb hole outside of it earlier here, whereas before it's been down here, that two feet distance makes a huge change. You see the ball stand up and roll forward. Four pins last to fall. Strike breakdown. It's good. Yeah. It was good. You heard her. Strike for O'Keefe, 19 pin lead. Back down to Carolyn. What, when Shannon left the big four, when Shannon left the big four, she switched to the more aggressive ball on the right lane. She is now using that ball on both lanes. So when she switched, it was during that big four shot she used the aggressive ball that she had only been using on the left lane. She is now using it on both lanes because she feels like she can get that ball right and it's going to read the lane the way she wants it to. Yeah, taller pin, a little bit more quicker response with that close pin buffer. Again, she can play left to right, just as she likes to get comfortable with. And now it's just a matter of carry. So both ladies really seeing the lane very, very well. Shannon still staying aggressive, getting it right. You can see there's more angle through the front than Brianna has. Who's going to carry out the 10 pin to win? Max score 221. For O'Keefe, 223. For Cote, this could go right down to the last shot.
Good goal. How's the spirit? So eighth and ninth friend for Brie. Remember, she started the match, so if she's going to win it, she's going to have to do it by showing up in the 10th frame. You see the max score of 223, 221, a difference of only two pins. But Brianna is down by 18, so she needs to put on her striking shoes right now. Her best prior finish at the Queens, 2015, 25th in Green Bay. New territory. Big moment. Needs this one in the eighth. Seven pin stands. Four pin isn't enough to push it out. It's interesting, I just caught. She looks at her target, and then when she's just about to release it, her eyes drop back down. But as we look low with her foot pattern, so close to the ankle, you see her tape on her fingers, really catches it, that yellow thumb hole as it starts to migrate down the lane. Now it gets taller and taller. Light pocket hit, the four pin just doesn't have enough to push itself and run over the seven. Whiffs and misses the seven. Wow, so close. Shocking. Yeah. If you're Shannon O'Keefe sitting down right now, you're saying, wow, just show up, make good shots. This is mine. Shannon barely glances up at her opponent. It's rare. She stays focused. But that's a huge break on the bench. Great shot to come back in that ninth frame. Really aggressive. Packs all 10 bin down. If Shannon controls the pocket, either strikes or makes spare, she's going to walk away with her first tiara. No loss in match play for O'Keefe was against Cote. 641, 637. Little added motivation for Shannon. Two strikes Dave here, she shuts competitor. her out. She is, Dave, she is. Possibly the first strike right You're here. Right. You bet. Perfection for Shannon O'Keefe, inching closer to the 2018 Queens title. Look at right here. This one was just a pinch inside of where the last one was. But she's got that angle, that left to right, the weight hole, the thumb hole. Again, it's spinning, it's losing speed, it's losing its rotation, getting into that roll phase. And again, look how the ball splits the eight, nine, goes towards the eight pin towards the back, any mark right here, and you're Shannon O'Keefe. She's got the Queen's tiara, Dave. A strike for history. Yes. There it is! Yes! Shannon O'Keefe has done it. She's the 2018 USBC Queens champion. A second career major for Shannon O'Keefe. And Shannon O'Keefe has put the women's bowling world on notice. She is a major contender for 2018 Player of the Year. What a start to the season for Shannon O'Keefe. This will be her second tour title. Four top ten finishes. She's locked in. Yeah. And she's a champion in Reno, Nevada tonight. What a moment for Shannon O'Keefe, second career major, first ever. USPC Queens comes here in Reno, Nevada. Knocks off the top seed, Brianna Cote. And writes more women's bowling history.
This is the best. You just do. The light beer you've been waiting for has arrived. Lower carbs, lower calories, higher expectations. Corona Premier.